Professor Belfrost's science class is back. Hi, welcome back. In my class, and today I will give you a lesson on chemistry. And this is just to continue our previous lesson on the same chapter, which is composition of substances and solutions. This is the second part. So, so let's see if there's something for us to review from our last lesson. So, yeah, here's some. So here's the summary. For covalent substances, and the formula represents the number and types of atoms composing a single molecule of the substance. Therefore, the formula mass may be correctly referred to as a molecule mass. Whereas for ionic compounds, which is discrete, which are composed of discrete cations and anions, combined in ratios to yield electrically neutral bulk matter, then the formula mass uh, can be calculated. Uh, in the same way as the formula was for covalent compounds, however, you need to notice that, that the formula for an ionic compound doesn't represent the composition of a discrete molecule, so it may not correctly be referred to as the molecular mass. The third point is a mole of substances that amount in which there are 6 point blah 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 times 10 to the power of 23 discrete entities, which can be atoms or molecules, and this large number is a fundamental constant in chemistry known as the Avogadro's number, Na, that's the, uh, that's the symbol, or the Avogadro constant in honor of the Italian scientist named Amedeo Avogadro. And this constant is properly reported with an explicit unit of per mole, a conveniently rounded version being 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 per mole. And the fourth point, the last one, is the molar mass of any substance is numerically equivalent to its atomic or formula weight in AMU. So per the AMU definition, the single uh, carbon-12 atoms weigh 12 AMU, and a mole of carbon-12 weighs 12, 12 gram, which is molar mass is 12 gram per mole, and this relationship holds for all elements since their atomic masses are measured relative to that of the AMU reference substance, which is the carbon-12 itself. Okay. So let's move to today's lesson. So yeah, today we we'll learn how to determine empirical and molecular formulas, and we have discussed a little about this in our previous chapter. And the previous section, I mean the previous lesson, has discussed the relationship between the bulk mass of a substance and the number of atoms or molecule it contains, which is presented by mole. Okay, so. Given the chemical formula of the substance, one may determine the amount of the substance from its mass and vice versa. Okay, so yeah, the first concept that we'll introduce today is percent composition. So an element that makes up a compound defends its chemical identity. The chemical formulas are the most succinct way of uh, representing this elemental makeup. And when a compound's formula is unknown, that measuring the mass of each of its constituent elements is often the first step in the process of determining the formula experimentally. And the results of this measurement permit the calculation of the compound's percent composition band as the percentage of mass of each element in a compound. So for example, say that we have a, a gaseous compound composed solely of carbon and hydrogen, and percent composition is as follows. So percent uh, percent hydrogen is just the mass height of hydrogen divided by the mass of compound times 100 percent and percent of carbon is as so so say that if an analysis of 10 gram sum of this gas so that it contains 2.5 gram H, uh, H hydrogen I mean and 7.5 gram carbon then the percent composition as calculated in the uh, slide uh, show that it is 25% of hydrogen and 75% of carbon, which builds this gas. So let's step to another example, which is a more focused one. So analysis of a 12.04 gram sample of a liquid compound composed of carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. So it contains 7.34 grams of carbon, 1.85 grams of hydrogen, and 2.85 grams of nitrogen. So what is the present composition of this compound? So here's the solution. So yeah, you just need to use the same um, uh, formula as before. Just you need to uh, adjust the symbol. So here, because we use carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen, that 
which is a percent C, percent H, and percent N. After doing some calculation, we get it is 61.0%, uh, 15.4%, and 23.7% uh, respectively. Okay? By mass. Okay? So this percent composition is by mass. Okay? So now let's learn about how to determine this from molecular or empirical formula. So constant composition uh, is a very useful thing for evaluating the relative abundance of a given element in different compounds of known formula. For example, that you have uh, ammonia, okay? We also have ammonium nitrate and also you have urea, okay? So the element nitrogen is the active ingredient for these kind of things. So the mass percentage of nitrogen in the compound is a very practical economic concern for consumers choosing among these fertilizers. Okay, so let's see which one we should pick. So a molecule of NH3, the ammonia, contains one nitrogen atom within 14.01 uh, AMU and three H uh, hydrogen atoms, I mean, with total 3.024 AMU. Okay, so its percent composition here is for nitrogen is 82 point blah 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 percent and for hydrogen it is 17 point blah 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 percent. Okay, so we can find these uh, also for the other one and this is your uh, quick exercise which one you should pick for the best fertilizers if we are to consider the highest amount, the highest rate of the nitrogen. Okay, so here's a more focused example. So say that you need an aspirin. So aspirin is a compound with the molecular formula known as C9H8O4. So what's the percent composition of each element that builds the aspirin? So here's the solution to calculate the percent composition of uh, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen of the aspirin. Then first we need to know that. Uh, the molar mass of the uh, aspirin itself it is 180.159 gram per mole okay then using the respective molar mass of each element that we get the thing as shown okay which is for uh, carbon uh, which is 60% uh, for hydrogen it is 4 point something percent and for oxygen it is uh, 35 point something percent okay so this is a rounded version okay and the sum is equals to 100 percent okay so now let's learn about how to determine uh, the thing the percent composition out of empirical formula okay so as previously mentioned that the most common approach to determine a compound chemical formula is to first measure the mass of the its of the constituent elements but keep in mind that chemical formulas represent the relative numbers not masses of atoms in the substance therefore any experimentally derived data involving mass must be used to derive the corresponding numbers of atoms in a compound so this can be accomplished by using molar mass for example to convert the mass of each element to a number of moles and the smaller amounts are used to compute whole number ratios that can be used to derive the empirical formula of the substance. So consider a sample of compound uh, that contain 1.71 gram carbon and 0.27 gram hydrogen. So its corresponding number of atoms in mole is calculated as shown, which is uh, 0.142 more carbon and 0.284 more hydrogen okay is it clear i think it's clear enough okay you just use you just need to use the molar mass okay so thus this compound may be represented by the formula of c 0.142 and h 0.248 but by convention the formula contain whole number subscript and this can be achieved by dividing each subscript by the smaller subscript. And here we obtain that this compound is instead CH2. Okay, so consider another example that we have a uh, compound contain 5.31 gram chlorine and 8.4 gram oxygen. So following the same process, it yields that this component is that uh, CLO 
O 3.5. Actually, because we need a whole number, we need to multiply each of these subscript by 2 to retain the same atom ratio and yield Cl207 as the final empirical form. So we need to uh, follow this three step to derive an empirical formula from experimentally measured element mass. Okay, so you need to read it by yourself and not read it for you. And here's the flow chart showing how the previous outlines work. So yeah, just let's start by discussing the example to see it clearer. So say that we have hematite which contains 24.97 grams of iron and 15.03 grams of oxygen. So what is the empirical formula of the hematite? So actually using the same uh, tactics, uh, strategy I mean, we can uh, gain this uh, result which is 0 0.6261 molecule of uh, iron and 0.9394 mole of oxygen. And now we need to derive the iron to oxygen molar ratio okay, by dividing with the lesser number of moles which gives us 1 mole of iron and 1.5 mole of oxygen. But this is one of them is not a whole number. So we need to yeah, multiply the ratio by proper conversion factor. And in this case, 2 is what we need okay so the compound is in, is instead every 2 or 3 okay so this is every 2 or 3 and finally we regard to deriving empirical formulas consider instances in which a compound's percent composition is available rather than the absolute mass of the compound's elements in this case that the percent composition can be used to calculate the masses of elements present in any company of mass of compound and these masses can then be used to derive the empirical formula in the use of ratio. So here's the example. So say that we have um, ethanol which composition is of 27.29% of carbon and 72.71% of oxygen. So what is the empirical formula for this gas? It's easy. So for our convenience sake, that uh, take the scale for percentage is 100 and sample weighing is 100 grams. Okay, so consider the definition that the mass percentage provided may be more confidently expressed as shown. So 37.29% of carbon is 27.39 gram carbon per 100 gram compound, and that's what we apply to to oxygen. And the molar amounts of carbon and oxygen in 100 gram sample are calculated by dividing it with its molar mass, which we gain here is 2.272 mole carbon and 4.544 mole of oxygen by the calculation shown this slide. So coefficients for the tentative must be uh, are derived by dividing with the lesser one of the two, which is in this case, it gives us 1, 2, and since both are whole number, that we, did, we don't need to multiply it again. So the uh, the gas that's meant is CO2, which is carbon dioxide. Okay. So now let's learn how to derive molecular formula. That we recall that empirical formulas are symbol representing the relative numbers of compounds element. So as determining the absolute number of atoms that we require con uh, knowledge of both its empirical and molecular mass or molar mass. And these quantities will be determined experimentally by various measurement techniques. And, uh, and molecular mass, for example, is often derived from the mass spectrum of the compound. The molar mass can be measured by a number of experimental methods, and many will be introduced in later chapters. So molecular formulas are derived by comparing the compound's molecular or molar mass to its empirical formula mass. And as the name suggests that uh, an empirical formula mass is the sum of average atomic masses of all the atoms represented in empirical formula. So here is the uh, formula that we use to get the number of empirical formula units per mole. So the molecular formula is obtained by multiplying each subscript in the empirical formula by n. So a x b y multiplied by n, which is a n x b n y. 
So for example, we have an empirical formula of CH2O. Then the empirical formula must for this compound as approximately 30 AMU, which is the sum of C, H, and O respectively. If known if the non compound molecular mass is determined to be 180 AMU, that indicates six times the number of atoms represented the empirical formula thus. The empirical formula is instead says 2 O all multiplied by 6 which gives us C6, H, H12, and O6, okay, which is actually glucose, okay. Yeah, that's the simple thing, okay. So let's work to the example. So uh, nicotine, an alkali in the nightshade family of plants that is mainly uh, blah, 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 it's not uh, important, the information, contains 74 point something percent carbon, 8 point something percent of hydrogen, and 70 point something percent of uh, nitrogen. So if 40.57 gram of nicotine contains 0 0.250 more nicotine, then what is the molecular formula? So it's easy. To work for this problem, that we need to determine the molecular formula from the provided data that make use of comparison of the compound's empirical formula mass to its molar mass. Okay, so here's to uh, for sake of our easiness that we make it we consider it relative to one gram sample of nicotine and it yields the following molar amounts of mass as calculated so six point something mole of carbon uh, eight point something moles of hydrogen and one point two uh, one point something moles of nitrogen so next Let's calculate the molar ratio of this element relative to the least abundant element, which is here, nitrogen. And it gives us 5, 7, and 1. And thus, we have 1 mole of nitrogen, 4 some point something near 5 mole of carbon, and 6 point something with near 7 mole of hydrogen. So the C to N and H to N molar ratio are close to the whole number and so the empirical formula is C5, H7 and N. So the empirical formula mass for the compound is therefore 81.13 uh, AMU per formula unit. And now let's calculate the molar mass for nicotine and it gives us 162.3 gram per mole. And by using this data that we can uh, find out that there are two formula units per molecule and finally we can derive the molecular formula for nicotine for the empirical formula by multiplying this by two which gives us uh, C10, H14, N2. This is nicotine for our chemical formula. Okay. Now let's learn the concept of molarity. So the preceding section of this chapter, what I've discussed so far, Focus on the composition of substance. Samples of matter that contain only one type of element of compound. But make sure sample of matter containing two or more substances physically combined are more than encountered in nature than poor substances. That's similar to a pure substance, and the relative composition of mixture plays an important role in determining its properties. And the relative amount of oxygen in, for example, yeah, the relative amount of oxygen in planets at most determines its ability to sustain aerobic life. And there are many things also relative that um, the relative amount of the active ingredients that can show the effectiveness, the strength, the resistance, and something, something else is a very important uh, characteristic of properties of something that we are analyzing. Okay, so this is very important. So solutions which have been proven, uh, previously been defined as homogeneous mixtures means that the composition of the mixture is uniform throughout its entire volume. A solution occurs frequently in nature and have also been implemented in many forms of man-made technology. A more thorough treatment of solution properties is provided in the chapter on solutions and colloids, which is later, but provided here is an introduction thing. Okay? So, yeah, the relative amount of the given solution component is actually known as concentration. Though not always, it's often that a solution contains one component with a concentration significantly greater than that of all other components, and this is called the solvent. Right? And this is just the medium in which the other components are dispersed and dissolved. Uh, the most common uh, solution is water, and the solution of water is, uh, and a solution which water is the solvent is called an aqueous solution. 
We have solution, we have solvent, and now solute. What is a solute? So a solute, not solid, but solute, okay? So solute is a component of a solution that is typically present at a much lower concentration than the solvent, okay? Most of the time, this is uh, solid, okay? So, yeah, solid solute, not solid, solute concentration are often described with qualitative terms such as dilute and concentrated, okay? So concentration may be quantitative assess, assess, I mean, using a wide variety of measurement units, and one of them is a molarity, okay? So what means molarity? Molarity is defined as the number of moles of solute in exactly one layer of the solution, okay? So that's the formula. So for example, say that we have 355 milliliters of soft drinks that will contain 0.1 trillion moles of sucrose. That's the molar concentration of the sucrose in the beverage. For, of course, it's very easy. So 0.133 moles divided by the liter of the solution. So we need to convert the milliliter to the liter with 1 liter over 1,000 milliliters, which gives us 0.375 uh, molar, okay, molar. The second example is how much sugar in molds contain a molar sip, which is uh, something about 10 milliliters of a soft drink from the previous example. Okay, so we have known that the molar rate is 0.375 molar. Then the answer is as shown. Okay, so mole of solute is actually just how much molar times uh, the volume. Okay, so it gives us about 0.04 moles of sugar. Another example, so this third Y uh, vinegar, okay, which is uh, CH3CO2H, and this is 0.5 liter, contains about 25.2 gram, so as the concentration, by right? utilizing the same ways, we get, this is, yeah, 0.839 molars. Also, next example, I want you to read it by yourself, okay? How many grams? Actually, this is the same way. First, find uh, uh, how much moles, okay? It gives up 1.325 mole. Then, and, yeah, the mass is just, uh, you need to uh, multiply it with the molar mass, which gives us 77.4 gram of table sum okay so another example uh the note i want you to read the note okay i'm not ready yet. Yeah, too many. okay so what volume of vinegar contains 75.6 grams of acetic acid okay so it's actually very easy okay so first you can find it and do some conversion as shown in the slide and it gives us 1.50 liter solution. Yeah. Yeah, that's done for today. Not very, not very difficult, right? Okay, so a little quote for you today. So a proper one said, one day or day one, did you decide? Okay. This is two similar but different. Okay. One day you have, you hope that one day you can, or you make your first day of your ability. Okay. Okay, so yeah, we need some exercise. So work on this exercise and check your uh, <clears throat> answer to the solution I provided. If there's some mistake or you doubt that your answer is correct or not, uh, please don't hesitate to tell me in the comment section. So it's five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine, ten. Done. That's all for the exercise. Thanks. For watching subscribe give a like comment share i'll be back on the tuesday and thursday so keep watching and be thoughtful ah don't forget to visit our uh website this is science with xysd.unaux.com uh see you on the next episode goodbye